Good morning to all. Today we entered second session and in this second session we are going to learn about the causes of World War II. And in the first session and we come across various causes for the outbreak of World War I. So in this session particularly and we are going to learn about the causes for the outbreak of World War II. So let us go into the topic. So these are the causes of World War II. And the first cause for the outbreak of World War II, Treaty of Versailles. And second one, failure of League of Nations. And third one, rise of Hitler. And fourth one, appeasement policy. And the fifth one, invasion of Poland. So let us see bit by bit what are these major causes. Treaty of Versailles. What is this Treaty of Versailles? Before going to this Treaty of Versailles, we all know that one, World War I started in 1914 and ended in 1918. Almost all four years the World War I continued. So with the surrender of Germany, the World War I came to end. So after the surrender of Germany, a treaty has taken place between victorious countries versus Germany. That is Britain, France in one group and against Germany. This is popularly we call it as a Treaty of Versailles. Why we call Treaty of Versailles means Versailles, a place located near Paris. So in this Versailles, a mirrored palace is there. So in this famous mirrored palace, a treaty has taken place. That's why it is popularly known as Treaty of Versailles. So after signing this Treaty of Versailles, so almost all World War I came to end. So let us see how this Treaty of Versailles become responsible for the outbreak of World War II. So unfortunately, in this Treaty of Versailles, Germany was made <coughs> alone responsible for the outbreak of World War I. Even though other countries participated, unfortunately, and Germany alone made culprit for the outbreak of World War I. So in this Treaty of Versailles, they made different kinds of provisions or what we call as in punishments regarding Germany. So what are those ones? Treaty of Versailles. In the Treaty of Versailles, generally they cover three aspects. So one is territorial, another one is military and the last one is uh, financial or economic uh, sanctions. First one is uh, territorial. So as per the territorial provision or as per the territorial penalty and Germany was asked to forsake or to surrender all their colonies to this allied force. That is what we call Britain or France. That is what we call territorial provisions. Territorial provision is nothing but under territorial provision Germany was asked to surrender all their colonies either to the allied powers or to their respected countries. That is what we call territorial provision. Second one, military provision or military penalty. Under this military provision or military penalty, so Germany was asked to reduce its military strength. So prior to World War I, so Germany constituted huge military strength in the Europe continent and especially soldiers, more than 10 lakh soldiers, and as well as other kinds of arms and weapons, especially submarines, tanks, like such kind of weapon constitute in German military. So, this Treaty of Versailles forced Germany to reduce its military strength drastically. For example, its military strength has to reduce from 10 lakh to 1 lakh. So, almost all, nearly 8 to 9 lakh the soldiers, uh, they lost their uh, opportunity. So this is what we call as a military provision. And the next one is uh, economic. This is the most uh, inhuman as well as uh, a virtual sanction that have taken place uh, against Germany. So under this economic sanction, Germany was asked to pay huge war indemnity or otherwise we call it as a Reparation. Reparation or indemnity is nothing but and Germany alone made responsible 
for the outbreak of World War I. So in this situation, Germany was asked to pay huge war indemnity or compensation. So it was forced to pay huge war compensation due to which uh, Germany became the most uh, pauper country. Pauper in sense means uh, where Germany is unable to lead their economic life. So this treaty of Versailles, if you look into that, that is responsible for the outbreak of World War II. So treaty of Versailles made Germany more unpopular as well as the most popular country in the world. So this is how the Treaty of Versailles which was signed on 28th June 1919. <coughs> so it is responsible for the outbreak of World War II. And Hitler after coming to the power and he wanted to take revenge against the countries who involved in designing of this treaty of versus that we will discuss when you come to another topic. So this is what we call design in this the treaty of versus. Then after the treaty of versus completion, the failure of League of Nations. So in order to maintain international peace and all these victorious countries and as well as other countries, allied countries, uh, they planned to create one international body in order to maintain international peace and avoid future wars. That international body properly we call it as a League of Nations or LOA. So this League of Nations came into existence on January 10, 1920. So whose headquarters located at Geneva in Switzerland. So at the time of its formation, only few members are there. And at the peak stage, that is before starting of World War II, the membership raised to 63 among members. When you come to the League of Nations, so League of Nations actually designed or devised by Woodrow Wilson, then president of USA. So he designed 14 point program. So he created 14 point program which become the constitution for this League of Nations. Under this 14 point program, and it asked all the members to abide or adhere to the policies of this League of Nations. So, this is very good setup, positive setup. Some extent, League of Nations played an important role in controlling international injustice, especially war and any other kinds of disputes that is boundary disputes or any other kinds of disputes. These disputes get solved by this League of Nations. But this League of Nations have some weaknesses. The main thing is the major country, USA, which is responsible in creating of this League of Nations, uh, not become active member of this League of Nations. And as well as Russia, like other countries, major countries, they are also not participated actively in this League of Nations. So, when it comes to the 1930s, the League of Nations members, almost all major countries, that is Germany, as well as USA, Russia, these countries, and they are not participated actively in this League of Nations. Since these members stood away from the League of Nations, so the League of Nations failed in implementing the main essence of this uh, policy. Sir. So the best example, when Hitler came to the power, he directly started to violate the rules of the League of Nations. So League of Nations at the time failed to stop the aggression or aggressive nature of this uh, Hitler and as well as Russia. So Russia is the biggest country in the world. So Russia also not interested to join in this League of Nations. Like one and one country and they started to violate the rules of this League of Nations. So this League of Nations at one stage failed totally in containing or stopping the growing power of this aggression, especially when Mussolini in Italy and as well as when Hitler in Germany came to power and they started to increase their aggression against their enemies. In this situation, 
Sir, League of Nations totally failed in controlling this aggression. So that's why historians uh, believe that one. So League of Nations they are also responsible for the outbreak of uh, World War II. So this is the story behind this League of Nations. And next one is the rise of Hitler. So after 1928, Hitler started to participate actively in Germany and he established his own party and after establishing his Nazi party, he planned to enter actively into the politics of Germany. So after 1933 onwards, Hitler became a powerful personality and after coming to the power, he started to expand his fascism. That is what we call as a Nazism and fascism, two components. And his policy we call as a Nazism policy. Under this Nazism policy, he started to attack almost all countries uh, on whom they have enmity. And as well as Hitler finally want to emerge as a super dictator in the entire world. And this rise of Hitler to the power in Germany feared Britain, France and other European countries. And his aggressive nature attacking other countries, occupying the colonies which Germany lost and other kinds of actions uh, made the Britain, France and other European countries uh, a fear nature over the Hitler's uh, action. So this is also one of the factors for the outbreak of World War II. And the next one is uh, appeasement policy. What is this appeasement? Appeasement is nothing but it is a political term. So as per this appeasement policy, in order to satisfy this Hitler, Britain and France, uh, they made one negotiation. So as per this appeasement policy negotiation, it started to extend its support to this uh, Hitler. Even though Hitler is against the Britain and France, uh, but Britain and France, they hatched a plan to provocate this Hitler against Russia or USSR. So USSR adopted socialist policy. So socialism started to expand rapidly in the European continent. So in order to contain or curtail this socialist policy in the European continent, uh, this Britain and France, uh, they hatched a plan to give support to this Hitler to go against this uh, Russia. So, as per this appeasement policy, Britain and France extended their support in military point of view, in financial point of view, and to make this Hitler divert towards this uh, socialist or Russian zone. So, this is what we call as an appeasement policy. So, this appeasement policy was also responsible for the outbreak of World War II. And finally, invasion of Poland. So on 1st September 1939, and Hitler invaded Poland, a port known as Danjing. The Danjing was occupied on 1st September 1939 with this uh, the starting of World War II emerge. So these are the five major reasons for the outbreak of World War II. So now here we want to know just like in World War I, how Europe get divided into two parts, that is what we called as a triple alliance countries and a triple entity countries we called as a. And likewise during World War II, the world get divided into two parts, that is an allied group and as well as an axis powers. Allied group that is USA, Britain, France and USSR. Axis powers Germany, Italy, and Japan. So during World War One, USA has no direct or indirect interference because USA is located far away and it is a no chance to interfere directly into the World War One. But during the World War Two, USA was forced to enter into that system. The reason is in 1941 December. 7, 
Unfortunately, Japan attacked Pearl Harbor, an island located in Hawaii. So, under midnight, so Japanese military they attacked this Pearl Harbor due to which uh, some hundreds of U.S. soldiers uh, lost their battle. So, in order to take revenge on this attack, uh, USA declared war on Japan. So, finally, before completion of World War II, so USA made a try to attack Japan in the form of hurling bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki on 1945, August 6th and August 9th. So this unpopular decision, infamous decision, make the world stunning after this Hiroshima and Nagasaki incident. So this is how that USA, Britain, France, USSR, they formed allied groups and Germany, Italy, Japan, they formed Axis powers. So World War I started on 1st September 1939 and it ended on August 15, 1945 with the surrender of Japan unconditionally to the allied powers, especially to the USA, Britain and France after Hiroshima and Nagasaki incident. So this is overall a brief story about the causes of World War II. So let us let us see these causes in presentation form. So major causes of World War II as we discussed it and first one the failure of Treaty of Versailles. That is Treaty of Versailles as we discussed it, which was created on January 28th, June 19, 19, was responsible for the outbreak of World War II. Already we discussed it. And next one is failure of uh, League of Nations. So League of Nations was created in order to stop future wars. But unfortunately, the League of Nations failed to maintain its uh, duties to control aggressive powers such as Hitler, Mussolini and other aggressive nations. So this also paved the way for the outbreak of World War II. Then after you see the rise of uh, Hitler. So Hitler, he came to the power in 1933 and after coming to the power and he planned to take revenge against the countries who are responsible in designing this Treaty of Versailles. Due to of this Treaty of Versailles, as we discussed earlier, and Germany have become a total pauper country. So in order to bring back the glory of uh, Germany and Hitler want to take revenge against these countries who are responsible for this Treaty of Versailles. Then after you can see the Japan expansion. So even though Japan <coughs> is an ally during the World War I along with Britain and France, but when during the period of World War II, Japan have some differences of opinion with Britain, France and USA. Then. Japan was forced to join on the group of uh, Axis. So, the Japan as well as uh, Italy and Germany, they followed a similar ideology that is dictatorship ideology. So, on the lines of this ideology, Japan also started to expand its empire in Asia and else part of the world. Especially Japan have a deep desire to become a superpower in Asian continent. As a part of that one, it started to invade China, some parts of Russia, even Indonesia, Vietnam, like countries slowly enter into the control of Japan. So after seeing the expansion of Japan in Asia and France and Britain, they got fear and this fear become responsible for the outbreak of World War II. Then economic depression. This economic depression in the coming chapter we will discuss in detail 
so what is this economic depression this economic depression started in 1929 in usa so economic depression is nothing but economic downfall that means the economy of the entire society or country or entire world is completely shut down so in this economic depression and huge political social and economical problems uh, will crop up especially in economic point of view unemployment poverty like such huge problems uh, will crop up so maybe historians believe that one economic depression also responsible for the outbreak of world war 2 then anti communism already we discussed this one and in order to control the expansion of communism or socialism in europe continent britain and france uh, they had a plan to extend their support to <coughs> hitler that is what we called as an appeasement policy in the side we can see that word appeasement already we discussed what is the meaning of appeasement it is in a political diplomatic uh, relation that was established between britain and france one group and as well as uh, hitler it is nothing but uh, giving support to hitler in order to stop his aggression against these two countries and uh, develop enmity against communism or otherwise we called as an socialism that become more popular in the entire european continent so this is what we called anti communism otherwise we called as an appeasement policy and the remaining militarism nationalism already we discussed yesterday in past section that is how these two also responsible for the outbreak of world war 1 and as well as uh, world war 2 now let us see the factors of world war 2 in gist form in these slides let us see first uh, the treaty of versailles so uh, the treaty of versailles uh, taken place on 28th june 1919 so this treaty of versailles happened between germany versus uh, victorious powers <coughs> german people were left humiliated and angered and seeking revenge after the signing of the treaty so germany to take full blame for world war 1 and severe limits to german military already we discussed that germany was asked to reduce its military strength drastically and germany forced to pay huge reparation reparation is nothing but uh, war indemnity or war compensation because uh, germany alone made responsible for the outbreak of world war 1 so due to of these three provisions of treaty of versailles uh, germany become the most uh, <coughs> actor popular country or unpopular country in the entire european countries and some countries felt guilty for the odds provisions of the treaty especially usa assembly is very against to this treaty of versailles even though usa is far away from this treaty of versailles but at the time usa president woodrow wilson indirectly responsible in forcing this britain and france to make a treaty with germany due to which so Woodrow Wilson become unpopular in USA. Next, see the failure of the League of Nations. So, League of Nations was created in January 10, 1920, in order to contain or control the powerful or coming disasters such as wars or any other kinds of. actions so the league main motto is uh, to maintain international peace and to avoid wars between the countries and thereby establish uh, peace and harmony in the world but unfortunately 
is the League of Nations failed to achieve these objectives. The reason is the countries that are responsible in creating this League of Nations, especially USA was one of the founder member of the League of Nations. So Woodrow Wilson played a key role in designing this League of Nations. Even though USA played important role in designing this League of Nations, but uh, USA remained isolated or maintained inactive participation in this League of Nations. That may be the one reason why League of Nations failed in propagating its policies and attaining success in implementing its uh, constitution. And next one is Russia. So Russia, because of ideological difference, so Russia or USSR not shown interest in joining of this League of Nations. And even the Britain and France, so which shown much interest in creating of this League of Nations earlier stage, but at later stage, these two countries have become busy in expanding their empire in different parts of the world. Due to of these reasons, the League of Nations not in a position to control the growing power of uh, fascism and as well as Nazism in Italy and as well as in Germany. So thus the League of Nations completely failed in containing the aggressive nature of uh, Hitler and as well as Mussolini and Japan. So due to which uh, that League of Nations believed one of the process for the outbreak of World War II. And next one is uh, appeasement policy. I already we discussed it. What is appeasement? Appeasement is nothing but to accept the conditions of someone provided their demands are reasonable to avoid conflict by accepting demands of an aggressor. So politicians felt the Treaty of Versailles was too harsh, therefore believed Hitler's actions uh, were understandable. So in 1934, Hitler remaining felt Germany had right to protect uh, herself, prevent spread of communism. So in 1936, German troops in Rhineland uh, acceptable for protection the Germans lived in this uh, area. So give into Hitler's demands or actions to prevent uh, war. So appeasement is nothing but in order to control Hitler or take aggressive action against Britain and France, these two countries they made a diplomatic relation with Hitler and uh, provoked him to go against uh, communism. And the next one is uh, Hitler's action. Hitler after coming to the power in 1933 and he become indomitable in Germany. So as we discussed earlier, so Hitler felt uh, a lot because of the Treaty of Versailles. Due to this Treaty of Versailles, uh, Germany become more unpopular. So in order to bring back the glory of this Germany, Hitler after coming to the power and he had taken all means uh, aggressive nature and to bring back all the places which Germany lost due to of this Treaty of Versailles and thereby Germany want to make a powerful country in the European continent. This is Hitler's action is most responsible for the outbreak of World War II. So up to now, we covered the causes, various causes for the outbreak of World War I and World War II. Now, in this topic, we are going to cover the effects of wars. Effects means, so what kind of effects has taken place, aftermath effects, after completion of World War I and as well as World War II. And these are segregated as political effects, social effects, economic effects like this. So let us see once. So what are these political effects, social effects and economic effects in India? 
First we will see the social effects. So human rights. Because of this World War I and World War II, human rights lost their method. That is, in World War I, according to one estimation, nearly 10 to 15 million people, almost on 1 crore to 1 and a half crore people, so directly died of this World War I. And indirectly also, and some more people, due to starvation and some other reason, they lost their breath and whose information not reached to the cell. So, during the World War II, that death toll get increased compared to World War I. Because during World War II, and huge little weapons and techniques they used in attacking the countries. Because of this advancement of weaponry and the nature of attacking the countries, due to all this one, it cost human lives more when compared to World War I. So during World War II, the period, the death toll increased to 2 and a crore to 3 crores according to an estimation. In this one, nearly 60 million people, almost all 60 lakh people died in Holocaust created by Hitler. Then another incident has taken place during World War II, that is the Hiroshima and Nagasaki incident, and which also swallows some lakhs of people in both Hiroshima and Nagasaki bomb attacks. Likewise, if you see, when compared to World War I, a huge death rate taken place during World War II. And the next one is different ideologies. So after the completion of World War I and as well as World War II, different ideologies emerged in Europe and as well as in any part of the world. Especially three ideologies emerged. One is capitalist ideology or democratic ideology and next one is socialist ideology or communist ideology and the third one is dictator ideology. So, different countries according to the political condition and economic condition and they offered either of these ideologies. USA, Britain, France, like such countries and they embraced democratic or capitalist ideology and the USSR or Russia and then after socialist or communist ideology. When compared to when coming to point of Hitler, Mussolini like personalities and they after dictator ideology. So likewise different political ideologies started to emerge in different parts of the world. This is what we call as an ideological war or ideological differences. This played an important role in the outbreak of World War I and as well as in World War II. And this one is balance of power. So after the completion of World War II, the entire political power in world get changed. For example, up to 1945, Britain and France uh, maintained their dominance. But after 1930s onwards, USA started to play a predominant role. After recovering from the Great Depression, in 1929 started in USA, and USA emerged as superpower in the entire world. So likewise, if you see Britain and France, after the World War II, lost their influence in their colonial countries. Especially in Asia, Africa, like continents, Britain and France lost their ideology. Especially this authority or what we call as an expansion of empire. So both Britain and France lost their authority on the colonies which they ruled in Europe, Asia and as well as uh, in African continent. So with this, two superpowers emerged after World War II, that is uh, USA and USSR. So these two powers started to play a predominant role on the political aspect of the world. So that tug between USA and USSR 
we call it as a Cold War. This Cold War continued up to 1991. We will discuss it in coming topics. And next one is international organizations. Already we discussed about one international organization that came into existence after the completion of World War I. That is the League of Nations. So League of Nations came into existence in 1920 to maintain international peace and establish harmony in the entire world. But unfortunately, this international organization is not up to mark to establish its properties. Then after completion of World War II, all the member countries and they come together and they created one international body. That international body we call it as United Nations Organization. So UNO came into existence on October 24, 1945 with headquarters at New York. So this international organization so came into existence on October 24, 1945, the headquarters located at New York. So very beginning, a few members are there in this United Nations organization and now presently nearly 193 of all countries they become members of this United Nations organization. So in detail we will discuss in the coming chapter the significance of United Nations organization. And now UNO is playing an important role in establishing its uh, unity. That is what we call as uh, the main objectives of uh, United Nations organization to establish peace in the entire world and avoid uh, future wars. So this is the scenario which we discussed uh, about the World War I causes, World War II causes and the effects of wars. So, if you want to know more details about these topics, click the links given below in the description. Thank you for your Thank you very much.